Okay, so three things I want to teach you about today, Teaching Tuesdays. We're going to go through our standard agreement. Okay, so I took the CLSA standard agreement and I took, they have some pretty aggressive language in there that I took out. Okay, do you know what I mean when I say aggressive language? Just like you will be. Yeah, stuff, it, stuff yeah, that like would scare, legal stuff, stuff yeah. that I would scare a client. Right. Like if I was a client, I wouldn't sign it. Do I want stuff in our contract that I wouldn't sign? If I was a client, no, we want our contracts to be fair. I understand why CLSA does that. They're looking out for the interests of the land surveyor. But I felt a little uncomfortable with some of the language they had in their standard agreement. So I took their standard agreement and I took out some of the stronger language. Okay, and then I tried to simplify it a little bit so that it was more understandable. Okay, so there is a standard agreement. That's not what you have. What you have is the plain language summary of our standard agreement. So this is something that I could try and give to somebody like Monique that she could use to read and understand our contract. Because even though I tried to clean up the contract, the standard agreement, there's still some legal terms in there that you can't get rid of because they're important legal terms. Terms like negligence and duty to defend and some other things, okay? But I want you guys to read this so that you understand what's in the agreement I'm asking our clients to sign, okay? And then we're gonna talk about some of these things are negotiable, some are not negotiable. Okay, by the way, the numbered list here matches our contract exactly. So item number two in the contract is item number two in this summary. Okay? So if you're talking to a client and they're looking at our contract and they say, I don't understand item number two, on the wrong page. you can read them, read this to them. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's right here. Okay? So we do not sign other people's agreements. Period. What do you mean? If somebody says you got to sign our contract, we don't do that. Oh, okay. Because okay? they're coming to us. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say there isn't, won't ever be a special case where Danny and I won't sign somebody else's contract, but I better really, really love that person. And then I have to very carefully review their contract. Because most contracts that you get from clients are very one sided. Okay. This is a very fair contract. I've gone out of my way. I'm using a standard contract from CLSA. I took out a few aggressive things in it. This is a very reasonable contract. And I'm willing to negotiate over some of these contract terms. Okay? You gotta be careful. If somebody's handing you their contract, Danny, chances are what kind of contract is it? Very one sided. Very one sided. Okay? We are also the, the most frequently we are going to be asked by contractors to sign their contract. We do not sign contractor construction contractors' contracts. We are not a subcontractor. We are a professional services organization. We are a consultant. Okay, I will never sign a contractor's contract as a subcontractor because that's not what we are. Okay, so 99% of the time the client will be signing this agreement. Okay, and I can say that because we don't do public agency work. When you do public agency work, you sign the public agency's contract and they will not negotiate with you. It is a take it or leave it deal most of the time. That's another reason why we're not doing public agency work. Okay, so uh, this just says, hey, Plain language is important. Good communication is important. Do I want our clients to be able to read and understand everything we write? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is a plain language summary of our agreement. So we're going to walk through this one by one. Okay, so the items in pink, I will not negotiate. The items Can in I green. Have a sticky tab, please? Yep. The items in green, I am willing to negotiate. Now, as a general rule, what, what did you say, pink? Pink is non negotiable. Green is a provision I'm willing to negotiate. Okay, as a general rule, if somebody here is negotiating changes to the standard agreement, who should that person be in the short term? You. Me. What's great? When I negotiate something in a contract, though, I want all three of you to be involved so you can understand what language I'm willing to accept and not accept so that at some point you can negotiate contracts. Because if I die, you three have to run this business. You need to know how to do this. Okay? So, number one just basically says... We're going to help. Said green is green, green is negotiable. Yes, pink is non-negotiable. Now you're not going to give this to the client, tell them, hey, we'll we'll negotiate all the things yeah, in green. Of course. But if they come back and say, hey, will you negotiate item number three? Yeah, we will. If they say, can we agree, uh, negotiate item number two? What is item number two? No. Yeah, we're, I'm not. You're going to pay for our work. Right? That's non-negotiable. Okay. Okay. So number one just says uh, we're going to help you with your project. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is in the written scope, which they get with the contract. Okay? If it's not in the scope, we don't do it. Okay? Is, this called, is this the scope? No, this is a, the summary of our agreement. The scope is separate and it's tailored to each job. 
The scope of services is what are we going to do on this specific scope job? Scope of services. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the reason that's specific important. Specific jobs. There, yes, the reason that's important is because I give the client a fee estimate when they get a proposal. That fee matches the scope, right? If they ask for stuff that's not in the scope, that costs more money. That's what number one says. So. Yes. I knew you guys were going to have questions on this. Because I don't know anything, but um, the summary of terms is standard. Yes, this, Everybody. No. This is, this is my summary. That's what I mean. Our company. Yes. Like every person we work for. Everybody's going to get this. But the scope is not. The scope really. is not but standard. It's, it's tailored to each job. Oh, I'll this way. So like if somebody wants to come and get a photography job, everybody's got to sign my contract, but then I'm going to give them a proposal for what job they want yeah. photography for. They may not so want separate. wallet size. They yeah. may want wallet size. So they may want thing, like you're saying, three locations. Contract, they may want one location. But as far as their their itemized list of the their work of what they're getting, doing that's yes. going to be different okay thank you so that's what number one says it says hey we're going to help you with your project but everything we're doing is in the written scope mm -hmm. if it's not in the written scope we're not doing it okay two is you're going to pay your bill okay should we put like a like they can't exceed a 90 day there's all yeah, kinds okay. of stuff in here I'm yeah sorry. okay three is you're going to give us the documents you have in your possession that we need to do the project yeah, that's a legal protection for me. The client can't withhold the document from me and then come back later and say, hey, you didn't see this and now I'm going to sue you because you didn't see it. So if you have a document that I need to do my job, you got to give it to me. Okay. Now, I'm willing to negotiate that. Maybe the client comes to me and says, I don't have any documents. Okay, well, we can negotiate that. I'm willing to modify that language. Okay, but anytime I negotiate an item in green, what happens to my fee? It goes up. It goes up because you got to balance compensation with risk. Okay. Item number four, we own the data and work products we create for your use, okay? And I can reuse those without your permission. Okay? Again, that is negotiable. Maybe the client says, hey, I don't want you giving my survey to anybody else. Okay, I'm willing to negotiate that. What Why does that do? do that? What does that do to my price? Price goes up. So let me give you an example. If Danny and I go out and find 10 property corner monuments on a, on a project, and then we're doing a survey for the neighbor, do I want to have to go back out and resurvey okay. those nine property monuments? No. So I'm, tell, I'm telling the client, I can reuse my data from your job without your permission. If the client says, no, I want you to have to, to go out and resurvey those monuments. If you're working for my neighbor, that's fine. I'm willing to do that, but that the price goes up. Why? Because it's more work. Because, but you have to do it anyway. No, because I can reuse the data from the project. But, but he's saying that's if they're not, the not going to... But he's saying if they're not going to let him use the data, then he has to charge them more because he has to redo it all. So there's but there's some the person that you redo it for is going to pay you to do it. No, not not necessarily. So there's some clients that would say, hey, we have a top secret sausage making factory here, and you can't you can't use anything we that you do on your survey for us on any other project ever again for the rest of time. Okay, well. All right, that's fine. But what happens if Danny and I go out? I understand what you're saying, but I don't understand why they'll get their price up just because they won't let you reuse it when maybe their neighbor He's wants He's talking it. about the next person that's wanting the survey. Okay, so here's why this is important. Because there's certain information on those jobs that Danny and I are going to take and we're going to put into a global database called the GIS. Every job we ever do throughout history, mm -hmm. right? Which allows us to be more efficient over time, right? Now, if the client doesn't want to let me do that with the data, that's fine, but then I'm going to charge them a little bit more. It's not a law requirement? Why? In there? No. Oh. Because I own the data. <laughs> and there's another reason why that's important. Here's why. So let's just keep going. Do all surveyors do that? Okay. Yes, this is in the standard agreement. There's another reason why it's important that I own the data. Okay. 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 So we'll keep going. Okay. Number five. This is the other reason why it's important. The data and work products we create for you as part of your project are only for your use and for the purpose we agree of ahead of time. Why? Because they, because if I give them a survey for A, they can't take that survey and use it for B because it might not be good for B. Well, and then it's going to right. Up. And I'm the expert. Yes. That's okay. another. So what I'm doing is I'm saying I'm going to do a survey, mm -hmm. but I own and control that data. I'm allowing you to use it for a specific purpose to accomplish your project. Mm -hmm. If you want to take my data and then go do something with it that I don't even know about. And you mess something up, I'm not responsible. That's what number five says. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Now, if they say, "Hey, we don't like number five. 
We want to be able to use your data for whatever we want. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm willing to have that conversation with them about it. But what's that do to my price? I thought pink price goes up because the risk. You're right. Pink is non-negotiable. Oh You're right. I won't negotiate. I won't negotiate five because yeah, there's just no. too there's too much risk. There's just too much risk. Well, they can always come back and ask. If yeah. They say hey. Use it for that. So they say hey. Yeah. Say, yeah. Can yeah, we use it for okay. that? So this says if you use it and we don't talk about it and agree ahead of time. If they come and talk to me and I agree then they can use give that data to their architect, let's say, or whatever, okay? It's the same thing like when we requested the building plans for the tree thing, the we had to ask the architect. You gotta sign it. Exactly, okay. okay. But, okay, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so six basically says the same thing, right? You're not gonna use our work product for something that we haven't talked about, mm -hmm. okay? Seven says, hey, there's two ways we charge you for our work. One is lump sum, one is time and materials. Lump sum is when we can estimate the amount of work ahead of time. Time and materials is when we can't. By the way, we're going to send you bills at least once a month or when we accomplish a major chunk of the work. That's called a milestone. You're going to pay our bills as soon as you can, and we agree to give you a receipt when you pay. Okay? Now, I'm willing to negotiate number seven if they want to come up with some different payment terms. So they might say, hey, Landon, we want to pay you when escrow closes. Well, that's fine. Maybe I say, okay, I'm not going to ask for a deposit. I'll get paid when escrow closes. But Danny, if I'm taking all that risk up front, what does that do to my price? Goes up. Price goes up. Eight, if you don't pay your bill in full, I don't have to finish my work. That is non-negotiable. Right? Nine, uh, if we don't perform our work in a reasonable way and on time, you can fire us. That's what it says in the contract. So this isn't one-sided. This is two, a two-sided contract. It's a fair contract. Okay? Ten, we are at Wizards. Our fee estimate and the work we believe we will perform is based on the information you gave us and what we can figure out from easily accessible data sources. Our work is difficult and complex. If we find unexpected things during the project, our fee may need to increase. We try not to do this, but it can't always be avoided. You need to add and as well as the time. Right. Yeah, that's good. You can make a note of that. So what am I telling them there? Like, can I, am, am I a wizard? Can I predict what's going to happen? No, so like, look, sometimes we get into a project and we find something totally unexpected. Okay? And then I got to go back to the client. Okay. Um, 11, we try and give you a good idea of the fees that you're going to have to pay for your project. But hey, government regulations are complex and they change all the time. I'm not going to promise you ahead of time that I've figured out all the fees. Yeah. Okay, non-negotiable. I'm not going to promise somebody that the, the fees are just too hard. Okay. 12, uh, we might need help from other professionals. This could be architects, civil engineers, and environmental consultants. We can help you hire those people, coordinate their work, and do our best to make sure they do a good job, but we don't control them, and we can't promise you their work will be perfect. Ultimately, you have the final say on who to hire, how much to pay them, and what work they will do. So I may manage other consultants for the client, but can I take full responsibility for their work? No, they are their own licensed professionals, and who ultimately decides who to hire? The client. The client does. Okay. 13, we don't control the weather or other things that may delay our work. Now, that's negotiable. If the client comes to me and says, hey, you got to promise me rain or shine, this is done in four weeks. I'm not saying that I won't make that promise, but the client's going to what? Pay for it. Pay for it, because I'm taking on more risk. Okay, 14, non-negotiable. If you go, if I find out you're going to go bankrupt, I can immediately stop work if I don't think you're going to pay my bill. Okay? 15, uh, we can file legal documents called a lien on your property. If you don't pay your bill, then when you go to sell your bill, when you go to sell your, if you ever go to sell your property, I get paid. It's called a mechanics lien. Pretty standard. Okay. 16, you're going to do your best to make sure we have a safe environment to work in. If you have killer attack dogs or land, uh, on your land or man-eating sharks in your pond, we need to know. Okay. So, like, look, if Danny goes out and gets bit by a man-eating shark in the pond, I'm going to sue the client, in theory, right? Potentially. So, yeah. Do I know that there's a man-eating shark in the pond? Mm -mm. No. They have to tell me. They're responsible to some extent to make sure I've got a safe work environment. 17 is non-negotiable. If someone sues us for something that happened on your project that wasn't our fault, you agree to defend us legally. That's pretty standard language. Okay? Because here's what happens on a lot of these projects. The neighbors are unhappy that somebody's building something, and they sue everybody. The architect, the surveyor, the client. Okay? 18. If we mess something up on your project because we do a really bad job, the money we owe you can't be more than $50,000 or total bill for the services on the project. If you want more protection for our, from our mistakes than this, we need to talk about it in advance. That is negotiable. Maybe they say, hey, I don't like that $50,000 limit. I want a $2 million limit. Well, that's fine. i got to talk to my insurance company and find out how much that costs, and then they need to pay for the extra insurance. So that is negotiable. 
19 is not negotiable. We do not provide warranties. It's not like buying a car. It's just what we do is too complicated. Okay? I don't provide warranties. It's like a doctor. You go in to have heart surgery, does he guarantee you that you're going to live? No, he won't do that. Too risky. 20. Uh, we don't have to do, we don't do anything with toxic waste or radioactive stuff. Mm -hmm. You gotta hire different professionals for that. Uh, 21, we're gonna work together. Don't set me up to fail. 20 is negotiable. Government is tricky. Uh, we're gonna do our best to give you good advice about dealing with the government, but ultimately you're the one that has to make the decisions about how to handle things where the government's involved. Now I'm willing to negotiate that on specific things, but as a general rule, we're just acting in advisory capacity to the client. They have to decide. So for example, on Tracy, the job in Tracy, I told the attorney, hey, you could do a parcel map or you could do try to do an LLA. I don't know what the city's gonna let you do. You can save some money if you try the LLA. I think it's worth trying, but you have to decide, client. And the client said, okay, yeah, we're gonna try the LLA. All right, I'm just giving them my recommendation. They have to make that decision. Okay, whose money is it? The client's. The client's money, that's why they have to decide. Now. We, we want to be a trusted advisor and I want to give good advice, but when you're dealing with the government, can I guarantee results? Mm -mm. No, I can't. 23, if we get into a disagreement and an arbitrator or a judge decides that part of our agreement has to be tossed out, we'll try and keep the rest. That's pretty standard language. Uh, if we get into a disagreement and need help to work things out, we're going to play by the rules in California. That's pretty standard. Okay. Twenty-five. If we get into a disagreement, uh, we go to arbitration, not to court. That's pretty standard contract language. We don't like to go to court because court's really expensive for everybody. So we'll go see an arbitrator. It's called binding arbitration. They're usually retired judges or attorneys. Okay, I'm willing to negotiate that. They want to be able to sue me. I, I'm willing to talk about that. But what's that do to my price? Price goes up. Okay. If we get into a disagreement, you have to come to our county to work things out. I'm not going to drive to see you. So San Joaquin County courts of San Joaquin County. Okay. Uh, if we get into a disagreement and the arbitrator or judge decides you were wrong, you got to pay the, our cost to defend ourselves. That's pretty standard because what you're trying to get people to do there is work things out instead of just immediately sue, right? Because like, look, if you sue me and we go to arbitration and you lose, you got to pay my reasonable defense costs. Okay, same rule applies to us. If I sue a client and we go to arbitration and I lose, I got to pay the reasonable defense costs. So listen, if, if I'm fine with a client over 1200 bucks, am I gonna take them to arbitration for that? Probably not, because it's not worth the risk. Okay. If you die or disappear to seek a tropical island, whoever you leave behind to run your business inherits this agreement. Okay, that's pretty standard. Uh, this is the whole agreement. You can't come back after we have a dispute and tell me we made some kind of secret handshake. If it's not in the agreement, it doesn't count. That's 31, that's not negotiable. 32, if you think we really messed something up on your project, we don't have a lot of valuable stuff for you to take. Uh, unless you consider a disobedient dog with bad legs valuable. Because we aren't worth very much, we carry an insurance policy to protect you. That insurance policy is worth $1 million, and we agree to keep our insurance policy active as long as we're performing work on your project. We plan to do a good job and sincerely hope you'll never need to submit a claim to our insurance. So that's me promising the client I'm going to carry $1 million worth of liability insurance. That is negotiable. They want $2 million or $5 million. We can do that. It just costs more. I got to pay my insurance company for that privilege. Okay. But this is a good two sided contract because I'm promising the client that we're going to carry insurance. Okay. Uh, 33, when you sign the agreement, you're basically promising me and everybody else in the world that you read it and that you agree with what's in it. Any questions <clears throat> about what is in our agreement? At some point, when um when a client might ask too many questions about this contract or want too many changes, yep. then we just stop working. We walk away. Yes. Yeah. So like, I'm really picky. Mm -hmm. Look, if you got somebody that this is a this is a very fair contract, I would sign this. I don't, I'm not going to ask somebody to sign something I wouldn't sign. If they get if they got really major heartburn, they're really bleeding over this. That tells me what kind of contract do they want. One sided. In their favor, and I won't do that. This is pretty fair, and I'm not saying I wouldn't tweak some of this. I will tweak some of it. Okay, but it's a fair contract. We do not sign one-sided contracts. BKF signed a one-sided contract. They're now being five, uh, sued for $5 million because somebody put a building two feet too tall. And they got a one-sided contract. They're probably going to lose in court. That's why we don't sign one-sided contracts. Okay? I'm like, look, you don't like this contract? And we can't, you know, if I can't get negotiate with you in a day or two about this, then we probably shouldn't work together because it's a pretty fair agreement. And I've also gone, I spent... 
two days trying to make sure that you could what? Understand it. Understand it. Plain like language. Vanessa, could you read this contract and understand it? Yeah. Monique, could you? That's the goal. I don't want to trick my clients with some kind of poison pill statement in my contract. That's not how we do business, right? Okay.